God, how abruptly that song ends. Amen. There's about to be another resurrection. Amen. Yeah. Next week, Resurrection Sunday. I'd like to invite you all to join us. We have three services, 830, 1030, and 5. We also have a special Good Friday service, Friday at 6 p.m. So join us for that too. And if you're a regular here, if you come here a lot, when you get here next weekend, if we can squeeze to the middle and squeeze to the front, we need to pack as many people in here as possible. There are going to be a lot of people. But we, there's no way to avoid it. There are going to be people. Help us out. Squeeze to the middle. Squeeze to the front. That'll be awesome. My name is Brad. I'm one of the pastors here. Welcome to Eternity Church this morning. We're so glad you're here. And we've got a free gift for you after the service. If you head out those doors... Take a right. There's a connection lounge there. There are a bunch of people 
Well, there'll be two for sure wearing yellow shirts. They'd love to meet you. You might see some of them walking around now. But, but please stop there. Get to know us. We love to meet new people. We love, we love to give out free gifts. Please stop by there. Um, also, um, moms, we've got you taken care of. We've got you covered. Head out the uh, door there, and immediately on the left, there's a mother's room. If you need to care for your young one, feel free to use that. There are nice, comfy chairs in there. You can even watch the service while you're doing that. And men, you're not off the hook. There's a changing table in the men's restroom, which is down the hall to the left, and the women's room is just past there. I think that's all I've got this morning. We're going to receive the offering, and... Um, we just believe in a really, in a really, in a spirit of generosity here at the church. So I invite you to give. I, I invite you to um, participate in this in this act of worship. The Bible says that. Um, uh, I got like twelve verses running through my head. That, that give, and it will be given to you. And it doesn't say it might be. It doesn't say that it's conditional. Other than give and it'll be given back. And not just a little bit, it says a good measure, pressed down so that you're, God's cramming it in a, in a container to give back to you, shaken together, and then it runs over. It's like a can of pop exploding back into your lap. So as the ushers come, I'm gonna pray. You can give in any of these methods here. Um, cash your check in the bucket, make your checks payable to Eternity Church. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you. Um, we thank you that you are awesome. We thank you that we celebrate um, you coming to this earth at this time of year and living life among us, knowing what we go through, learning our thoughts and, and, and our actions and our attitudes and living with us, but then giving your life for us. We're so grateful. We're so thankful that you loved us enough to do that. We worship you this morning, and we just give back to you, both in worship, in our finances, um, with our lives, God, we give back to you and say, take it and use it for your glory. We love you. We praise you. We honor you in your name. Amen. Let's continue to worship.
it for me in my house. You'll get your way for me in my house. We're gonna love you always. I speak to the enemy. You can't have my family, 'cause we belong to the Lord. With heaven's authority. Take back our destiny, 'cause we belong to the Lord. I speak to the enemy. You can't have my family, 'cause we belong to the Lord. With heaven's authority, we take back our destiny, 'cause we belong to the Lord. I speak to the enemy. Serve you for me in my house. You'll get the praise for me in my house. We're gonna love you always. For me in my house.
church today, Palm Sunday, week before Easter. I love this time of year. Time of year where everybody's realizing, hey, you know what? Maybe there is a God. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see more new people at church than any other time of the year. You know, and uh, next week we've got Good Friday service and then a whole nother sermon on Sunday, our three regular Sunday services. And um, I think it's just one service on Good Friday, so it's going to be packed. I think Brad probably said that, but a lot of people at that time of year will come to church with you if you invite them. You know that? And uh, in fact, I, I saw a statistic a couple of years ago that uh, like something like 80, 90% of people, if you invite them to come and sit with you on Easter weekend, they will come and sit with you. And so, uh, and you know that at Eternity Church, that, that we, it's going to, you know, we, we're going to 
present the gospel to them. They will get an opportunity to give their lives to Jesus Christ and their whole lives, their whole family, the trajectory of their family for generations could be changed because you got out of your comfort zone and just said to somebody, hey, and you know what? I want, we gotta teach some people how to invite people, you know? Like I was watching some movie the other day. It's not great, so forgive me. Um, but in it, the dude was teaching the other dude how to like pick up chicks. And he was like, he doesn't say, would you like to come with me? He goes, all right, let's go. You're coming with me. And I was like, you know what? Maybe we need to do that for inviting people to church. Not, hey, would you like to come? But hey, I'm saving you a seat. Let's go. You know, hey, I'm saving you a seat. I'll pick you up. I saw someone online this week um, <clears throat> invite someone to church and to our church. And the, the person said, uh, well, how will I get there? And the person replied, I'll come get you. I'll come pick you up. And I was like, that's how we do it, you know? Some of you I know, you're like, man, that would, be, that would take gas and I'd have to wake up 10 minutes early and I'm not sure if it's worth, someone's eternal salvation is worth that. Um, isn't that the truth of it though? Isn't that the truth of it though? Right? Like, oh, you know, it's uncomfortable if I've got to pick somebody up. Well, get uncomfortable and change someone's life. Amen? Let's get uncomfortable and change somebody's life. So anyway, here's the thing though. I, I'm not going to be the church that makes someone feel bad because they didn't bring anyone to church. But I think you should feel bad if you don't invite anyone. Can't make someone come, but you certainly can make yourself invite someone to church. So do that at least once a year and it'll be all right. So, um, but I, I recommend doing it this week. Just invite someone to come to church with you and uh, it's going to be packed, but, um, but that's all right. Uh, it'll probably still be packed next year. Maybe not. Miracles could happen. We could move into a new building before next Easter. It would still be a miracle even if it's after Easter, by the way. So not that that wouldn't be a miracle, but you know, who knows what could happen. So anyway, but uh, before we preach, though, I, um, I just want to give you a bit of an update for people who were traveling last weekend. Um, so for those of you who were on spring break trips, um, you know, um, I just don't want you to miss out. Um, we, we've been talking for six months with a certain um, company to purchase their building. And so I wanted to show that to you. Um, my words aren't coming out right. Um, I, I want to preach. That's what I want to do. But I'm also excited about this. And I'm like, woo. But um, anyway, we got some good news. Not this week, just gone, but the one before. Uh, that the, the, the deal we'd been working on for six months to be our new church home. Uh, we got that signed. It's all under contract. And so you can pop that up on the screen, actually. We bought the AMC in Johnston. And uh, come on, that's good news, right? go to the next slide now. That's what we're going to do there. Come on now. Come on. We're going to lift Jesus up. Amen. And uh, just to hear a bit more about that faith journey, if you could go watch last weekend's message, uh, it's called Faith and Miracles. You can get that on YouTube. You can get that on Facebook and also uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts and things like that. So go listen to that message. Um, but this is what we're doing here. Again, for those who are away, I I'm being really quick today because um, you can go watch last weekend's message for a more in-depth conversation. Um, but uh, the plan is there are 1,200 seat auditorium at the back. All this blue is Kids Church, um, uh, Welcome Cafe, uh, adult classrooms, the steeples out here, a room back there for our eternity cares, food bank, uh, furniture, whatever we can do for people who need. Uh, and so we're going to keep doing that, but go to a whole nother level when we got more space. Oh yeah, and out here, we still got a skate park that can go right out the front here, uh, baptismal out here, Jesus up there. And so it's just an absolute miracle. For more details, go watch last weekend's message. So here's the deal, here's the deal, here's the deal, here's the deal. Um, anyone can ask questions, but no one who doesn't go watch last weekend's message first cannot ask questions. <laughs> Is that fair? Yeah. It's like when someone asks you, um, how do you get there? I'm like, Google it, dude. Don't ask me things you can Google. You know what I mean? Like, and so I want to say that as well. Ask any questions, but just go watch the video first and then ask questions, all right? It's super exciting and uh, 
we, we love what God's doing. So next week, we're hoping to have new pledge cards as well. Uh, and But we'll talk a bit more about that. It'll only be five minutes. Oh, actually, it won't be next week that we talk about that because that's Easter. We're not going to be like, welcome to Easter, everybody. Give us a million, you know. But um, <laughs> might work. I don't know. But, um, but anyway, so y'all ready for today's sermon? All right. The title of my message today is Make Church Weird Again. We've got to make church weird again. And so uh, some of y'all don't need to work very hard to help us do that. <laughs> Talking to the whole front row. But, no. <laughs> some of you have to work a little harder. But anyway, you got your Bibles turned to Acts chapter 2. I'm just going to read the first four verses. It says, when the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Then suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. It divided, uh, sorry, and divided tongues as of fire appeared on them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we're not alone, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, that we don't have to navigate this world without you, without hope, without help. And God, thank you that when Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit descended, that we could be transformed, renewed, empowered to live the life that you designed for us, that it is possible, that it is possible for a person to change when we surrender our lives and our will to the Holy Spirit. And I pray today that you would help me to preach your word with power, conviction, clarity, help people understand a portion of your word that perhaps many of us don't understand. And I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, say amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. You may take your seats. Make church weird again. Yeah. And uh, so I was, um, um, I was preparing my message and I, um, I was preparing to preach from Genesis chapter 29, which I've got a great sermon from there that I'm excited to preach in a couple of weeks. It's just, uh, I really am excited about that, about breaking family curses, you know, breaking the, the garbage that has gone from generation to generation. Um, but then I had just one more person ask me about speaking in tongues, and they asked me that because a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago, I did a sermon on the Holy Spirit, and um, I didn't talk about tongues, but I mentioned in there that at some point soon I would talk about speaking in tongues, and um, you remember that sermon, How? Yeah. How? Holy the Holy Ghost. Ghost. And, um, <clears throat> and so anyway, one more person asked me, and I really just felt in my heart that I need to share that with you. Um, and, and maybe elaborate on that. And I haven't spoken on speaking in tongues for about uh, two and a half years. And so I want to come back to um, not that exact message, but maybe those points and a version of that and just really help people in the room who have been new over the last couple of years uh, understand um, what speaking in tongues is all about, uh, why it's not over with, I want to bust some misconceptions and then share uh, why you should speak in tongues. And so can I get a quick raise of hands? Hands up if you are new to eternity since the last two and a half years. Give me a wave, right? Yeah, cool. That's a lot of people, right? And that's in the 8.30 service, right? And so, um, so anyway, this scripture was the receiving of the promise that Jesus had made us, right? That when you receive... <coughs> the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. That's what Jesus said, right? Uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power um, to be my witnesses. And the reason that we'll receive power to be the witnesses is n a number of things. Number one, we'll be strengthened. Um, we'll get gifts from God so we can witness. But also, the Holy Spirit will transform our lives so looking at us will also be a witness, right? And so the Holy Spirit does both of those things in our lives. Uh, what happened here was, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they received power, and it was messy, it was uh, weird, right? Um, it says, and they suddenly came 
from heaven a sound like a mighty roaring wind. And so that's weird, right? Like if that happened in here, hands up, if you're going to at least for a moment contemplate the exit strategy, right? Like you are. Let's not pretend that you're just going to be like, no, anything goes. No, you're going to be like, uh, one, two, three. All right, those two are close together. That's weird. Why isn't there another one? Okay, you know, and uh, you're going to start contemplating the exits. And then it says that tongues of fire sort of appeared on their heads and rested on them. And so there were tongues like flames uh, on their heads, fire on their heads, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they began to speak in tongues as well as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And that's a weird church service to be in, let's be honest, right? Like, come on, like y'all are like, no, that's totally normal. No, that's a weird church service to be in. Get any one of those three things and you're looking for exits straight away, you know? Like there's a roar, you're like looking at the exit. Now there's tongues of fire. People's heads are on fire. It's not nothing. You know, at that point, you're probably going to get out of there. And then suddenly, I uh, should have bought a Honda, but I bought a Mitsubishi. And you're like, what is happening? I'm leaving, right? And so early church was messy. It was weird. And we can tend to have such an overwhelming desire to sanitize church, to sanitize salvation, to sanitize the Holy Spirit for a modern world. And I actually think that cessationists, that's those who believe that the, 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 the workings and the giftings of the Holy Spirit ended with the apostles, those people, I think that was the first attempt to do seeker-friendly church. Because roaring wind, tongues of fire, shoulda, bada, hunda, bada, bada, mitabishi, is weird. It's not seeker-friendly, right? At least in the natural. And so, um, and, but, but, but things weren't so sanitized back then. Things weren't so sanitized for the early church. People were getting healed. People were getting healed because the church believed that people could get healed. And so faith made people well. Amen. They laid hands on the sick. And our world is so sanitized that when a worldwide pandemic came around, we were, we, we, we were laying hands on all of the chairs and sanitizing them with Clorox wipes instead of laying hands on the sick. Because we didn't really believe that we could lay hands on the sick and see them healed. So instead we started laying hands on the chairs to sanitize them. And <clears throat> but it wasn't so sanitized back then. People were speaking in tongues. In fact, they were speaking in tongues so much that the apostles had to address that to bring a little order back into the situation, okay? Not the problem we're having now, all right? Like, so, so don't get me wrong. If we roll the wrong way, guess what? Just like the apostle Paul and Peter and all the apostles did, we will talk to people, address the situation, be like, bro, calm down a little, you know? Just like Paul had to do, you know? Um, but, 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 but it was happening so much so much that they had to address it. Sometimes church went over time. Did you know church went over time back then? You know, having a set time that we will be having on our website. I, I don't know why we do it. I don't know if we do it or not. We probably do. But <coughs> having service start time, I'm pretty sure that they had that on their early church website tablets. You know, they're like, look, at 10 a.m., we're going to have you know, church, but I guarantee they didn't say to people, and it'll be a 90-minute service. <clears throat> I guarantee that wasn't on the tablet, you know, uh, but, but we're, we're real clear, aren't we, you know, on our websites, and some churches, it's a 70-minute service, and I'm like, 70 minutes? Crikey. I'll preach for that long on a good day, you know what I mean? Like, like it, 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 it's so organized now. It's a little over the top. One time in the Bible, church went so long that a young man fell asleep on the window ledge, fell out the window, smacked his head and died. Luke writes that Paul's preaching went on and on. That's what Luke writes in Acts, that it was on and on. And after saying that, he goes, and he was still preaching, you know, and, uh, and that's what church was like back then. Don't worry, they raised the young man from the dead. 
Now, I'm not saying we ought to go crazy. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying that we disregard order, that we disregard planning, and that we disregard stewardship, wisdom, leadership. No, Paul warns of this. Paul warns of it. He's like, hey, hey, let's get this thing in order, you know? And so, so we're, not a, we're not saying let's go crazy. We're not anti-order. We're pro it. But when I was young, it wasn't weird anymore. It was crazy. It was weird and crazy when I was young. <clears throat> now, I don't mean every church. I assume there were lots like ours, but, but it was a little nuts. You know, we, we, had, um, we had just people just randomly scream in the middle of the service and you couldn't tell them not to, you know. Like what I find is if, if you, your behavior makes the service become about you, you're out of line. Does that make sense? And so, but we would have people just in the middle of the service just like, Aah! and it's like, it's like, you know, now everybody thinks there's a terrorist or something in the room and their attention has gone from what was happening on stage to now what you're doing. So now you've become the object, the focus, the attention in the service and that's not the way it's meant to be. I'm not talking about how, you know, you're singing a song and in the middle of the praise you want to yell out, Jesus, hey, I've got no problem with that. Now, if it's every eight seconds and we're trying to worship, but all we can do is see you and hear you, we have a conversation. You hear what I'm saying, right? <clears throat> but, but, but we don't want to make the service better. But when I was growing up, it was just absolutely crazy. Some people were screaming, other people were down the front, they were laughing, other people were crying, half the church was speaking in tongues over the top, not to themselves, not just, not just worshiping, but like trying to outperform, trying to, trying to get over the worship leader, or trying to get uh, louder than the, the preacher, and, and then someone would get up, you know, they'd be sitting down, and then the, you'd see that leg start wobbling, you know, those, you know the, the leg is wobbling, and, and then they're standing up, and they're, you're like, oh no, here he goes again. You know, and he's not, he's not getting his Elvis Presley on, you know what I mean? He's just got his leg, he's wobbling, and you know what's going to happen next. He's going to stand up and just boom, and then he's just going to run, you know, in the middle of the service. <laughs> You're like, and he's running, he's just running around, gone. You don't know what's going on. And while he's running, there's someone else in the room trying to bring the same word that he brought last week. Yea, verily, 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 unto thee I would say, I am well pleased, but I'd have you go further, further into the things of the Lord, further. Every single week. We're like, we know he wants us to go further because you told us last week and the week before. But the problem is, we don't know which way he wants us to go further. Because all you've said is the same thing every week. Who went to church like this? Five of us. So this is irrelevant. <laughs> He's got a word. Someone else is yelling out in tongues. The pastor's trying to share a word that he prayed about, that he studied. And now this guy, with no theology degree, no understanding... He's going to quote something out of context. We don't even know who he is, but he's going to take over and become the preacher for the day. And we're supposed to sit there and be like, amen, brother, you're right. We need to go home and slay the kittens. <laughs> Not that I was opposed to that back then. But I'm kid, I'm joking. Relax. Relax. All this crazy stuff, it was out of order. It was out of line. It's not how church was meant to be. And I'm not mocking it. I did just begin to wonder, though, if it was God. Or were people just using the Holy Spirit as an excuse to act like a fool? And that bothered me. And I don't know, some of them were probably sincerely motivated. Sorry, there's an eyelash on my glasses. There's getting hard to overcome. <laughs> Some of them were sincerely motivated by the Holy Spirit, no doubt. But some others were just copying others. I don't know. Maybe they all needed to read Paul's instructions to the church about spiritual gifts and order. 
because you definitely weren't supposed to have seven people at once trying to outdo each other with a word in tongues over the top of the pastor's sermon. Paul says, you may receive the gift in church, but the best use of tongues is your personal prayer life. Now, personal doesn't mean it can't be in front of anyone, or it doesn't mean it can't be at church. But if you receive the gift of speaking in tongues and then in church, you're just all you want to do is just outperform the worship pastor, outperform everyone standing next to you, outperform the preacher. You, come on now. No, you, you do what you want to yourself. Which is, do you hear what I'm saying? And so it's not that I'm trying to stop church being weird. Hey, look, the fact that we're even talking about speaking in tongues in church is weird. So we're weird right now, right? But we want to honor the whole counsel of the Word of God. Because of what I saw growing up, I ran away from anything remotely Pentecostal. I did. I just ran away from it. I'm like, you know what? We don't necessarily need that third of the Trinity. No, no, c come on. Y'all y'all know, like, you all know what I'm saying. Uh, there's a pastor I know um, that one, when he started discovering the Holy Spirit, someone said, be careful of those Holy Spirit people, which is like saying, be careful of those God people because the Holy Spirit is God. Father, Son, exactly, right? And then you preach one sermon on it, like, or two a year, like last couple of weeks ago and today, and people are gonna be like, they're obsessed. Really? He should probably get 30%, 33.33333%. Oh, come on. But I did, I ran so far away from it. And so did a lot of people. And so these days, modern church is so safe. It's safe for the new person. It's safe to invite your friends because the pastor won't say anything that makes you or your new friend squirm. He won't mention the Holy Ghost. He might talk about a whole lot of roast outside after church, but that's it. He won't talk about anything that might convict someone's heart that they're living wrong and might need to change their life. No, it's safe now. Most churches these days are so similar to the world that the only difference is that we sing different songs. God doesn't want people to get saved and then go home with no change in their lives except for a change in their Spotify account. That's not it. We're so sanitized now. We sanitize the difference. We sanitize the dunamis power down to maybe a static electricity, a little zap here or there, you know? It's like you, your life won't change, but it'll feel tingly. That's what church became. There's not this dunamis power that changes lives. No, no, no. What we've got is a little static zap. Zip, and you leave and you go, ooh, that felt nice. But your life didn't change because there's no spirit power. I did it too. It's not just all the other churches. I never used to teach on it. I wouldn't equip the saints with this great, powerful, life-changing gift. I would never pray for someone to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I would never let anyone know that, that I was a tongue talker. In fact, if they mentioned it, I'd be like, just silent, say nothing. Never let anyone hear me speak in tongues. I'd be scared of it. And so because of my rigid need for order and control that was a response to the disorder and chaos and the crazy that I saw, the saints, the church, the kids, this whole church went unequipped, living without many of the gifts that edify their lives. And so a couple of weeks ago, I spoke on Holy Spirit again. Uh, not the first time, this is like, it was about three or four years ago when I realized we need to start speaking on the Holy Ghost. Um, but then many people asked, what is tongues? And so today I want to share... Uh, on tongues, what it is, what it's for. Um, don't care if somebody uh, thinks we're too weird and doesn't want to come back because I spoke on tongues. That's fine. We will grow anyway because everyone else who receives it will be equipped with power to be his witnesses. Amen? And uh, so I want to smash three misconceptions first, okay? Misconception number one, <clears throat> and I alluded to this before, cessationists, uh, is that speaking in tongues died with the apostles. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 to 11 is the scripture that they use to sort of defend that. It's the one scripture they use to defend that. It says, love never ends. Um, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. Um, for we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. And uh, people who believe that tongues and other gifts of the Spirit are done, they believe that these gifts died with the apostles, and they base 
that entire doctrine on this one verse, okay? And so, so they see the words will pass away or they see the words will cease and then just randomly decide to um, assign uh, a date to that. Now, I believe it was about 600 years ago that they, that they assigned this date. Um, sorry, it's about 600 years ago where they first started deciding it must have stopped one day, you know? Um, and the date that they uh, assigned it to, they said, well, uh, it, the script, the scripture doesn't say it, but they were like, well, that must be when the apostles died. You know, like, it, it's kind of like the one where they say, it's kind of like similar people will say things like baptizing infants. Well, scripture doesn't say that they baptized an infant, but it does say that, they, Philip, uh, that there was a family and there might have been an infant there. You know, when they, uh, building theology from silence is a terrible way to build theology. You build your theology on the Word of God. Doctrine, orthodoxy, all of it's got to come from the Word of God, amen? And so it's a very flawed understanding of this scripture, and I'll give you two reasons why it's flawed. Number one, we see knowledge. Anyone still learning things? Anyone still got knowledge? Come on now. Is knowledge still being gathered? Is knowledge still being passed from one generation to the next? If knowledge has passed away, if knowledge has stopped, if it is over, why do we have seminary? Why are pastors going to study the Word of God? Why are people going to university? Why? Because obviously knowledge is an important pursuit that has not ended and we have not attained it all and we're not born with it, right? And we're still learning new things. And so the time, obviously knowledge didn't pass away with the apostles and now since then nothing new has ever been learned. Reason number two, uh, more importantly, though, it tells us when these things will cease in the Scripture, when the perfect comes. Now, look at your neighbor. I told you the perfect hasn't come. Come on, just one look at your neighbor and you know it's not perfect. It is not perfect in here. Come on now, look around the room. It ain't perfect, is it? There's some men in here that are like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. The perfect has come. I married her. Or I'm going to. Are you single? <laughs> you know? <laughs> come on. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. But when Christ returns, the perfect will have come. Amen. When Christ returns and we are gathered up with him in eternity, we won't need tongues. That's when, this, if you have to assign some made-up time for when these things too shall cease, that is when we are in heaven with him, living in eternity. It's the only thing that would make sense, come on now, but it tells us when the perfect comes. Why? Because once Jesus has come and we're swept up and gathered up with him in the clouds, we won't need to prophesy because it's already done. We won't, need to, we won't need signs. We won't need wonders. We won't need healing. We won't need words of knowledge. Why? Because we are already with the Father in heaven. And so that's when these things shall cease. And so that hasn't happened yet. So we still need to prophesy. We still need words of knowledge. We still need works of power and miracles and wonders. And we still need to speak in tongues to edify our souls. But when we're in heaven, we don't need no edification because we're edified whole and complete. Amen? Jesus hasn't come back yet. And so we're going to need the gifts of the Holy Spirit until the trumpet sounds. Misconception number two, speaking in tongues is too weird. Speaking in tongues is too weird. Now, most people in this room are spirit-filled. Hands up if you would consider yourself a spirit-filled believer. Give me a wave, right? Someone brought a friend with them this week, and they're like, they're over here. You know me? You know, trying not to be seen. But listen, like, most of us in this room are, are spirit-filled, and most of the people in this room aren't crazy. Um, now, some for sure are crazy in this room. But let me share something with you about our super weird, not just regular weird, but our super weird, kind of crazy, spirit-filled friends in the room. Um, they were crazy before they got saved. We did not do this to them. <laughs> okay? All right? Church didn't do this to them. That's how God just made them a bit crazy, and that's all right. 
They were already crazy before they got spirit-filled, and now they just are spirit-filled and crazy, all right? You ever met someone that was totally crazy before they met Jesus, right? And guess what? Jesus didn't save them from being totally nuts. He didn't. I, I, it's not his goal to make people less crazy or less weird, you know? If anything, you're going to get a bit more weird. It's not his goal to save you from the world's judging eyes. It's not his goal to make you more normal. Come on, God's not trying to make you more normal. He's not trying to make you more palatable to the world. The Holy Spirit didn't come to set you free from the world's ridicule. He came to set you free from the shame of their ridicule. Come on, to set you free from caring about their ridicule. But he didn't come to set you free from their ridicule. Or from being, he came to empower you to live the life that God called you to, no matter what the world says about you. Plus, I'd rather be spirit-filled weird than weird like this world is right now. Come on, if chicks dressing like dudes, if chicks with beards and calling themselves pregnant men isn't weird, my goodness, then speaking in tongues ain't even close to weird. Jeepers. The whole world's out there saying, like, chicks can get pregnant, chicks can grow beards. And I'm not talking about your Italian grandma. I had one of those, all right? It's just regular women. Come on now, all right? Like, they're out there saying that all these ladies can grow beards and that men can get pregnant and all this other gear. But then you mention that you're a Pentecostal and they're like, that's weird. I'm like, really? That's what you think's weird? Not this eight foot seven dude in a mini skirt walk up. That ain't weird. I'm weird. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> if the world thinks dudes becoming women and women becoming men and kids becoming foxes and putting kitty litter in the school bathrooms normal, then Lord, make me weird, please. <laughs> Come on now. People are like, oh, I get the virgin birth, but not the speaking in tongues. Really? For me, the virgin birth was the bigger obstacle. And if I'm going to believe that a chick who's never, ever been with a man got pregnant and gave birth to the Savior of the world, speaking in tongues is pretty easy hurdle to get over after that one. Come on now. The only difference is what is more widely accepted opinion in the world. That is it. But on a scale of, if there is a scale of what's weird in church, that whole virgin birth thing, that's the weirdest. Yeah. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm all in on that too. But that's way harder to believe than the Holy Ghost wants to give me a gift that when I speak in tongues, it edifies my soul and I communicate with the Lord. Come on now. Someone say amen. amen. Misconception number three. I got a shot of landing this plane on time. Sweet. Sick. Awesome. All right. Not that I care. One of you might fall out the window up there, you know. I wonder how long after church they had cushions around that window. How many weeks, you know? Whenever Paul comes in, they're like, get the mattresses, lay them around that window there, you know? Anyway, misconception number three. Speaking in tongues is just earthly languages. Speaking in tongues is just earthly languages. That's a misconception, okay? Um, now, I'm not going to stay here for very long, uh, but it's a common misconception that I want to just get out of the way before moving on to why you should get baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. Uh, on the occasions people heard the believers speaking in their own language, <clears throat> it speaks more about their hearing than the other person's speaking. Okay, it's kind of like a couple of weeks ago when I did a sermon, and then and I said one thing, and someone t uh, tweeted or posted online a totally opposite thing, but put my name underneath it, like that's what I said, and that's what they heard, but it's not what I said. You hear what I'm saying? And so in scripture, when it talks about it, it doesn't say they spoke in this other person's language. It actually always. I think, almost always, at least I'll just leave that caveat, says they heard them in their own languages. And that's an important caveat to understand. 
because that means that whether or not it is and whether or not God does supernaturally give me the gift to speak French, ha ha ha, oui oui, you know, which apparently he just did, and so that was amazing. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but whether or not he does that, when I'm speaking in tongues, <laughs> sorry. If you're new, this is a fairly normal service. Um, uh, for us, weird to you, but, um, but like whether or not I, God gave me a gift to speak uh, French or not, when I am speaking in tongues, God can do whatever miracle he wants in there is to hear what they need to hear. You hear what I'm saying here? And so, um, so anyway, but even having said that, Paul the Apostle do, uh, does speak of tongues and they often speak of um, um, various kinds of tongues. Um, and this could mean that there, this could mean that there's a gift where God would supernaturally let me speak French, um, or uh, or that while I'm or different kinds of tongues, as in all of our gift of tongues sounds different. It could mean either of those two things. Um, but we do know for sure that in Scripture there have been times where God did a miracle in the hearer, and they were able to hear what they needed to hear from the communicator, right? And uh, so anyway, so while the gift of tongues. Um, is a direct communication gift between you and God. As, we, as uh, in Mark, uh, Jesus speaks about tongues. He speaks about a gift that is a new-to-earth language, um, not an ability um, for someone to speak an existing language. He says a new-to-earth language, okay? Uh, so anyway, uh, Paul's writings are almost always about the gift of tongues that is given after being spirit-filled and is between you and God. So today, I want to talk about that gift and why you should speak in tongues. Sound good? <clears throat> All right. I only have about six points left. Um, but they're really fast, okay? They're really fast. So uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on them because I want to open the front for prayer at the end, okay? So number one, speaking in tongues edifies your soul. Speaking in tongues edifies and strengthens your soul. Um, now, I am today giving you like one-liners, okay, from Scripture, because I don't have time to read all, all 200 verses, and I don't have time to do each point with the whole chapter, um, but, um, but, you know, take photos of the Scriptures, write them down, go study the whole surrounding context, and you'll see, but in, and, and, and everything I'm saying is backed up by multiple other Scriptures as well, and you can see that as well. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, the one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, okay, um, this is why Paul was saying, look, just don't do this in church all the time. You know, he's saying, that's to build you up, okay? Um, he says it strengthens you, it strengthens your faith, it edifies, speaks of building up, making strong, feeding your soul, okay? Um, edifies, it's feeding, literally feeding your soul, okay? It'd be kind of like when I'm out in the words, I have food that, that you know not of, right? I, I, I can feed my soul by speaking in tongues. And in a world of chaos and division, in a world where your soul can begin to feel grieved by what's going on around you, speaking in tongues will strengthen your soul so that what's going on around us doesn't have to get inside us, okay? So you should speak in tongues. Just before this, Paul said, I wish you'd all speak in tongues, now, we often forget that because we go, see, this is where he's telling us to speak in, in church. He's saying, speak in words we can all understand instead of tongues. And yeah, he is saying that about in church. But he also, before that, said, I do wish all of you would speak in tongues. I wish you would all speak in tongues. And he doesn't say that about gifts that aren't for everybody. Okay? And so he doesn't say, I wish all of you would pastor a church. Because that's not a gift or calling for everybody. His prophecy comments were about being in church. But the only reason he said, I'd rather you prophesy, is because he didn't want everybody creating confusion in church. But he still did say that you should all speak in tongues. There's a gift that can feed your soul so it's never tempted to feed on the crazy in the world. Your soul can be edified with the things of God. Amen? Like this, when I'm going to go into some brutal meeting or brutal environment... I will feed my soul first. Like when you're going to go shopping on an empty stomach and then you were supposed to get steak, vegetables, and fruit, but you came out with Doritos, Doritos, and Doritos, right? And you just ate a whole bunch of crap. You said to them at the register, just don't even put one of them in the bag because I'm going to eat it walking to the car. 
And then before you've paid, you've opened it and you're filling up on Doritos because you went there with an empty stomach. And you can fill your soul before you go into difficult situations. So your soul's not tempted to be filled with the chaos and the pain and the bitterness and the division of whatever it is that you're walking into. Amen? <clears throat> Two, when you speak in tongues, you speak and pray the perfect will of God. You pray the will of God. Romans 8, 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And it goes on about giving utterances and groanings in our hearts. And um, when, the, when, when talking about tongues, Paul said the Spirit intercedes us uh, in accordance with the will of God. So when you pray in tongues, you're, you're only ever going to pray for that which lines up with the will of God on earth and in your life, even though you don't know what you're praying. I heard someone once say, I don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Who remembers a song? I can't remember how it goes, but it's basically that. When, I, when you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. And, and I speak Jesus, absolutely. But the idea that when I don't know what to say, I'm just going to say Jesus. I'll say Jesus, but I'm going to speak in tongues when I don't know what to say. When I don't know what to pray, when I don't know what to say, I'll speak in tongues. And so, amen. Um, have you ever felt like there's something going on around you? You don't know what to pray, you don't know what to say. I'll be sometimes standing next to someone and I'm like, I don't know what to pray, I don't know what to say. You know, I'll walk into a situation, I don't know what to pray, I don't know what to say. There's something going on inside me, like that old DC talk song, what's going on inside of me? I despise my own behavior and I don't know what to pray anymore. Speak in tongues when I don't know what to say, amen. Number three, speaking in tongues will help you overcome weakness, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, reinforcing what we just said before, when you don't know what to pray, pray in tongues, amen. But when you're just overcome by your own weakness and you have no words, speak in tongues. When you're just overcome, you, you, you've messed up your life and you know, you've just sinned, you've finally fell back into something that you thought you were done with, speak in tongues. Well, repent and speak in tongues, amen? So, so uh, just in those weak moments, you know, I remember trying to overcome certain addictions and struggles in my life and when the, when the real struggle, when the burden was on me, Sometimes I just have to get in the car, go for a drive, and speak in tongues. And at the end of getting in a car and go for a drive and speaking in tongues, you know what? Um, I uh, got out and I felt strong. Anyone else had that experience before? Yeah? You get out and you're like, I feel strong now, you know? Uh, number four, speaking in tongues builds your faith. I have met probably none, maybe one, but I can't think of any ex tongue talking Christians. I, I, I can't think of a single one. There may be one somewhere in my life, but I can't think of who it is. But I haven't met many tongue-talking ex-Christians. Something about being spirit-filled is just going to keep you hooked in, hook, line, and sinker in your faith, in the Word, and in the Lord. Amen. Um, they are the most committed <clears throat> tongue-talkers. This, um, well, this isn't my observation, but this is research that tongue talkers are the most committed and least likely to backslide Christians in America. Did you know that? Did you know that Pentecostal kids are the least likely kids to backslide in college? Speak in tongues at home and teach your kids to do it too, right? Um, and your kids will be the least likely of all the kids in college to backslide. Praise God, right? <clears throat> there must be something to that. There's got to be something. Like what? It must be real. Did you know that the Pentecostal denominations in the United States are the fastest growing denominations in the United States? Because they're witnessing. Did you know that people who speak in tongues in general at any age are the most likely to stand on the truth of the entire counsel of the Word of God? Tongue talkers are the most likely in all of America to still stand firm on biblical marriage between a man and a woman, to still stand firm on gender. God made men and women, and it doesn't change, and there's no men in the wrong body or women in the... No, 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 none of that. They are the tongue talkers, the Pentecostals in America are the most likely to stand firm on abortion and believe that God created and that God values life from conception. Why? Because speaking in tongues builds in the believer a strong faith. Jude 1.17, 
But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time, there'll be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It will cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourself up in a most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Amen. You want to survive this? Get filled with the Spirit and ask for the gift of tongues. Come on now and pray in this. You want your kids to survive this? Then teach your kids from a young age. Be a freaking weird Christian. Not one that's the same as the world. Be a weird Christian and they'll survive it. Amen. Speaking in tongues is a command. Everyone loves a good armor of the Lord sermon, don't we? Having done all you can to stand firm, therefore fasten the belt of truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Ready your, <coughs> excuse me, ready your feet with the shoes of the gospel of faith. Take up your shield of faith. Grab the helmet of salvation and swing the sword of the Spirit and pray in the Spirit all the time. If you want to stand firm, pray in the Spirit. Come on, hands up if you, if you can at least admit it's harder to be a believer standing firm on the Word of God now than it was 20 years ago. Come on, it is, isn't it? Like, and maybe not for you, but think about your kids. It is harder, right? And, um, but there's an answer. There's an answer. Lastly, and most important, speaking in tongues is speaking only to God. 1 Corinthians 14. For one who speaks in tongues speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him. That's true. I do love that. For no one understands him. But he utters mysteries in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 is not a passage about why not to speak in tongues. It's a passage about the incredible power of tongues to bring to you personally a stronger faith. And it's also about how in church speaking in a way that people understand. That's what it is. It's not don't speak in tongues. It's speaking in tongues. It's amazing because that whole passage where everyone thinks it's telling everybody to speak intelligible words which it is in church. But that thing has some incredible theology on tongues in it, doesn't it? First Corinthians. When you speak in tongues, you're speaking directly to God. The devil doesn't know what you're saying. There's no snooping ears at the door of your prayer. It's just you and God. So many other things that we do So many things I do are all about me and you and God. So many things I do in my life are all about me and the world and God together. Speaking in tongues, it's me and God. It's not about impressing anybody with eloquent words because the truth is anyone hears me thinks I'm bat crap crazy. So it's not about them. If anything, it's about not caring what they think. I was speaking at the tongues of the traffic light one day with my window down and forgot I had my window down until this. I was tempted to yell out some other words, but I didn't. It doesn't impress anybody. It's not about anything but my spirit and my God in ways I don't understand and it edifies my soul. One thing I like doing in the springtime, in the summertime, and the fall, when there's green grass, is just bare feet. I don't know why I like that out in the grass. Just with my son, walking around, both of us speaking in tongues. And we just come back in just so full, you know? Edifies your soul, strengthens your faith, empowers you to overcome your sin and weakness. It's an act of obedience to God's word. And it's lining your life up with the word and the will of God. It's not cool, not cool, it's not eloquent, but it is powerful and it is life-changing. And you should speak in tongues.
You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to speak in tongues. So today I'm going to encourage you. Number one, many of you do actually already speak in tongues. I'd say solid 70% of our church, probably. But what I want to encourage you to do now is stop forgetting about it. Just get right back in there. Open your mouth and go. You have a gift to strengthen your soul right now. When you feel so weak, desperate for a pastor to come and pray for you, speak in tongues for 10 minutes going for a drive, you know? And then if you need help, reach out. But there's so much you can do on your own, you know? So this is a good sermon to remind you to do that, to do it more. Lately, what I've been doing is I drop the kids off at school and I go for a drive around the AMC and I just speak in tongues the entire time I drive around it. I don't know what I'm saying. Wouldn't have a clue. I usually leave with, amen, it's ours. You know? Serious. Be hilarious if like this week, like every day, there's like 15 cars every morning just laps around there. People like, what's going on? Feel free to drive around it and pray, you know? If you don't know what to pray, speak in tongues, you know? But here's what we're not gonna do at church. We're not gonna manufacture crazy in church like the 90s. But we are gonna pray for you to receive the gift of speaking in tongues and encourage you to go home and speak in tongues. Okay? Amen? So what I'm gonna do, if that's you, you can all stand up with me now. We've got the whole band. Yep, good. The whole band. I can count in Spanish. But it wasn't the Holy Spirit that taught me, it was the offspring. <clears throat> And they got it wrong, yeah. But anyway. Quite the storm, isn't it? Flying around. So we're gonna be done in about seven, eight minutes. Um, but what I wanna do right now is I just, you know, like just get over what people think. Do you want a stronger faith or not, right? So I ain't gonna do the close your eyes thing for this one. Because you're either gonna get weird or not. All right, so I just wanna say this. If you want the gift of tongues and don't have it, come down the front right now. Come on down right now, just get out of your seat, Boop, straight down, all right? And, um, and I've got my team and we're gonna pray for you. And what we're not gonna do, we're not gonna go like the 90s where someone would stand with you until you, we're like, we're not leaving and you're not leaving until we hear you speaking tongues and then people just fake it so they can get out, you know? We're not gonna do that. We're gonna pray that you'll be filled with the Spirit and that God will give you a good gift. Who of you, by asking for a good gift, would God not give it to you, right? So scripture says. So we're gonna pray and we're gonna ask that God to give you that gift and it'll strengthen you in all the areas of your life, amen? But this, the band's gonna sing, so don't worry, everyone's not gonna be listening because some people, when they do get the gift of tongues, they're immediately, they're just like, boom, it comes out, you know, like Jeremiah, I can't hold it in, you know? And, um, and that's okay. There'll be music on. And, um, and some people, it, you're just gonna keep praying for it all week. They used to call that tarrying. And some of you are gonna do that. And at some point, as you just keep asking and keep going. But I personally believe, now, um, I grew up Assemblies of God and they said that if you're filled with the Spirit, you will speak in tongues. I don't believe that. I know people just looked at me with horror. I believe if you're filled with the Spirit, you can speak in tongues. The difference is you can choose to obey or not. You can choose to open your mouth or not. God's not gonna be like, open a stupid mouth. You know, like, he's like gah, 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 gah. no, 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 no. No, I would just believe that you can speak in tongues if you're filled with the Spirit, okay? So what I'm gonna do is when the people come across here, we're gonna pray that you'll be filled with the Spirit and that God would give you the gift of tongues. And then most of the work's gonna be on you just doing it, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna pray for you in a moment. So come on, come a little closer to the front there, guys. Don't, don't be scared. Um, before we do that, there's one more thing I gotta do and I just wanna quickly pray for people away from Jesus. But while I'm doing that, I want you guys to just, just you guys ignore me and just start praying to God. Just, just, just start praying. Just ask the Lord to bless you today with this gift. 
Everybody else, if you're here and you don't believe in Jesus, you need to give him your life, okay? If you get struck by lightning in this storm afterwards and you don't know Jesus, you are going to hell. Facts, hell is real. And sometimes we just need to remember that it's real. I want you all to know, by the way, that every friend that doesn't know Jesus that you have is going to hell. Let's get serious about this. Like how much do you have to hate someone to not do everything you can to see them miss out on hell and get into heaven, you know? I don't say that to be mean. I say it because I freaking love people and I want them to know Jesus, you know? And if you're here and you don't know Jesus, number one, you're not going to heaven. Number two, you're not living the best life you can. But today, if you say yes to him, you can live the best life you can. So pray a prayer with me. Give your life to Christ. Don't pray this prayer if you have no intention to follow him, okay? Because when you give your life to Christ, the intention is to follow him, to live your life his way. When he speaks to you and says, change this, do that, you're gonna say, yes, Lord. Because you know that when God speaks and you obey, life's better at the other end, amen? So let's pray this prayer together. If you're away from Jesus, you're not following Jesus, maybe you've never had a friendship with God, I want you to be in heaven with me for eternity. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. I'm gonna say it one line at a time and I want you to repeat it back with me one line at a time. And I want everyone else in the room to say it together so that the new people aren't praying it alone. Amen. So come on, everybody together. Dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died on a cross, paying the price for my sin, and you rose him up out of that grave to give me life, hope, joy, peace, power, and eternal life. I receive it all. I receive this new life with you as my Lord and my Savior. And I repent of my sin. And I ask for your help to live my life your way from now on. So please speak to me. Lead me, guide me, strengthen me, and help me to become all that you design me to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, come on, praise God, hallelujah, come on. All right, lastly, I just wanna pray for you and then I'm gonna pray for these guys to dismiss the service. But lastly, if you gave your life to Christ, I'm gonna to count to three, I want you to lift up your hand. So if everyone could close their eyes and bow their heads, nobody looking around. Close your eyes and bow your heads, nobody looking around. If today you gave your life to Christ, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your hand and hold it up for five seconds so I know who you are. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm not gonna tell anyone who you are, where you're standing, what you're wearing, who brought you, none of that. I just wanna know who I'm praying for. So on the count of three, if that's you, hold your hand up for five seconds. One, two, three. Shoot your hand up and show me who you are. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. You can put your, oh, God bless you. That's three. You can put your hands down. Awesome. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for those three people that even in a weird service, people get saved. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so God, I thank you for the liberty that has now come into their lives, the freedom that has come into their lives. And I pray that you break the shame and the pain of their past off their lives right now in the name of Jesus. And you help them and you lead them and you guide them. Help them become all that you designed them to be in Jesus' name, amen, <clears throat> amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, text the word SAVE to that number there or scan the barcode. It'll also be on social media after our services. We wanna send you a Bible in the mail this week. But everybody else, you're free to stay and worship. This song will play for about five or 10 minutes and you're welcome to stay with us or you can go out and new people get your free gift. Everybody come back, invite someone for next week. But right now we're gonna pray for these folks down the front. Come on, if you're staying, reach your hands out in faith as we pray and then our team's gonna come along and stand with you and pray with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you said that even though we're earthly and compared to you, terrible fathers, we still know how to good gifts, good gifts. And you said, how much more then would the Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? And we know today that 
the, that the, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is a good gift. And we know that if speaking in tongues edifies, strengthens our souls, that it's a good gift. So you, so you, our Heavenly Father, will give us these gifts as we ask today. You will give it. So Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give everyone down the front here the gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues in Jesus' name. Lord God, a gift that will edify them, a gift that will strengthen them, a gift that will help them to become the witnesses that you've called them to be, Lord God. But God, it will help them to have a strong soul and a strong faith as they navigate this crazy world. So in the name of Jesus, we baptize these folks down here in the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And we know now, Lord, that every single one of them is receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I ask God that you would give them the gift of tongues as well. And that you would keep them, Lord God, that you would help them to have faith for that gift even right now. Even right now, Holy Spirit, give them the faith for that gift. God, a gift that in no way makes them look better in the world, but in every way makes them better in the spirit. Gives them a better, stronger spirit, Lord God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Come on, band, could you keep singing now? We're gonna have our team come and pray for every single one of these folks down here. Every single one of these folks down here. God bless you. Hallelujah. We love your prayer.